This is Detached, a third-person puzzle platformer with hopefully a bit of action. It's the game I'm currently working on and it's also my third first devlog of the year, which is a bit of a problem, I know. But we'll touch on that a bit as we go through the progress I've made on Detached so far. I wanted to create a puzzle game, largely because I played a whole bunch of Breath of the Wild over the past month and I was inspired. Don't you find that you end up making games similar to the game you're currently into? Feels like a bit of a distraction sometimes, but it's been a lot of fun so far. It's also one of the hardest things I've tried to do in my game dev journey so far. Level design is really freaking tough, especially when puzzles are involved. There's a lot to consider, like how to keep the puzzle fun and interesting whilst also keeping it somewhat logical. For example, what possible logical way could a robot head open a door? I know, we're talking about logic here, and the logic of there being a robot head that rolls around in the first place is a bit sketchy, but still, I think you get my point. Robot heads don't open doors. But maybe they could if there was an access control pad on the door that they could get to. Now, how the heck is a robot head gonna get to an access control panel that's meant for something a little taller than a robot head? Well, I guess maybe if one of these healing pod things had fallen over, he could probably roll his way on over to a control panel over here, which is a bit far away from the door, so perhaps we'll make it start up a ventilation system instead of directly opening a door. And then the robot head could shoot himself through the ventilation system and smash open a vent cover and progress through to the next area that way. Well, I guess that's one way a robot head opens a door. Something I've tried not to resist is letting the puzzle ideas contribute to the story. I found that sometimes I even have to let the puzzles drive the story. I want the player to ask the same questions that I've had to ask. I don't want to tell the player the whole story straight up. There needs to be some mystery. Like yeah, there's a robot head that's rolling around, but why? What happened to the rest of his body? What is this place? What's behind that door? What happens when I find the next part of the robot's body? The plan though is to have a ready to release game in a relatively short period of time. My goal with Detached is not to make money, which is something I wish the game dev industry had a whole lot more of. Despite what the Unity CEO might think, my opinion is that games should be created with the intention of telling a unique story, whilst providing people with an escape, something to get lost in and to give them something to remember. Don't get me wrong, I'd love for the games I create to pay my bills, but only if the people playing my games think they're good enough to pay for and want me to create more of them. Now, for me to figure out if people actually want to play my games, I need to stop starting games and I need to start finishing them. I've approached Detached with a clear plan in mind. It will be a short game with three levels. Each level will have three areas and that will be the whole game. I'll release it for free to itch and see what the feedback is like before starting the next one. To understand how long it will take me to finish a feature, I've started working in sprints. I started by giving myself a week to complete an area. The first area took me three days to complete, but the second area took me two weeks to complete. The second area is much larger than the first. This though is the idea behind sprints, to better understand how long it will take me to complete different parts of my game. It's not necessarily about giving myself some harsh, unrealistic deadline, but to work in a structured way. At the end of each sprint, I should have a playable part of the game that I could theoretically hit the build button on and give to people to play. I've promised those in my Discord server that they'll get access to the level 1 alpha once I've completed level 1. If you want to test out the early releases, you can find the Discord link in the description below. I'm hoping to have the first level complete by the end of the month. Assets from the Unity Asset Store have been a massive help in getting me further along in the development as quickly as possible. The sci-fi asset pack I'm using is incredible, but an important consideration was that I should be able to create models and textures that match the art style of the assets I buy. Inevitably, there have been assets that I've needed to create to realize some of my ideas. This conveyor belt, for example, wasn't included in the pack, but I thought it would be a really cool puzzle to solve. Try to figure out what needs to be on the conveyor and figure out how to turn it on. This obviously adds to the amount of time it's taken me to complete this area. Feels a bit like I'm using the assets included in the pack for the more filler type parts of the world and that I'm creating the hero objects from scratch. I don't mind that though because it's a lot of fun to create models and textures. Something I've learned about level design is that there are loads of repetitive tasks, like placing floor objects one by one. 
So I did spend a week or two creating a 3D cursor tool similar to the one you'd find in Blender to help me put my levels together more quickly. I've packaged this tool and it will hopefully be available to purchase on the asset store in like 3 months. My process so far has been to create the base of the level using the assets I have and then block out the parts I need to create myself using Pro Builder. Once I'm happy with the flow of the level, I go on to creating the assets to replace the blockouts with. So far, I've used Blender for all my modeling and Substance Painter and Designer for all my texturing needs. I've made excessive use of Cinemachine for handling cutscenes. This is something I hadn't really thought about, but cutscenes play a huge part in letting the player know they have progressed and completed a piece of the puzzle. Cinemachine makes cutscenes really easy to do. You can create a track to animate a camera on to help the player understand what is going on and where. I found that it's important to think in systems. What I mean by that is that rather than thinking of this conveyor belt for example as just a conveyor belt and programming away, I think of it as a machine, with cables that need to be connected, and based on that idea I created a system for handling machines that have a bunch of cables that need to be connected for it to be able to turn on. Once the player has figured out how to connect the cables, the machine turns on, provided that it isn't reliant on another machine being turned on. When all the required machines have turned on, a cutscene will play if one has been assigned. Thinking about problems in this way should make it easier to configure any machines I create going forward. So whilst it took me longer to develop this system, I know that it will be way quicker to create similar configurations for machines going forward. If you're new to the coding scene and interested in creating future-proof systems, I'd really advise taking a look at inheritance, interfaces, and abstract classes, which are really cool programming concepts that help us create easy to reuse components. There have been some really interesting art challenges I've faced, like making cables. I've never really thought about or had to create cables before, and I ended up just making a bunch of bezier curves in Blender. This is probably not the most optimal approach to making cables for a scene, because I didn't design the rest of my scene in Blender. And the problem with that is that I need to go through a bunch of iterations to get the cables placed correctly. I should probably spend more time thinking about a better way to get that right. Animations have been loads of fun to work with. I'm not the greatest animator just yet, but every time I complete an animation, I feel really proud of myself and play the animation over and over and share it to my 6 Twitter followers who really don't care about this random big machine that can turn and move. But that's okay because I think it's impressive. I used the U-Motion animation tool in Unity and that's made my life much easier so that I don't need to keep exporting things from Blender. I'm happy to admit that there are a lot of placeholders currently in my level, like the visual effects and some of the art, but I figure I can polish those off at the end. As long as I get to a point where I have a completely playable game, I can spend as much time as I think is necessary on polishing things to make them fit a bit better. I also really enjoy working on visual effects, so I would like to spend a good amount of time on improving my VFX abilities over the course of creating this game. This molten steel visualization effect, for example, is just not good enough as far as I'm concerned, and I think it will need some work in future, but for now, it'll do. It's crazy to think that I'm further along in my creation of Detached after 2 months than I was in the previous game I started after 6 months. While spending a good chunk of time on planning sounds super boring, it's actually made developing this game so much more fun so far. I hope you've enjoyed this first devlog of Detached, and I also hope to see you on the next one. Okay, bye.